Hello everybody, come on in. Come on in folks. Good evening, folks. Come on in. So, I wanted to chat about something from the 13th. On the 13th, there was a triple shooting that occurred between Stanridge and 3rd Street East in Lancaster off Avenue J. There was a pistol whipping with possible shots fired also off of um Well, the, the victim wound up on Pillsbury in front of the church. And it occurred over um, on the other side of Sierra Highway. But, so there were three, there were four of them right there. And then there was another one in Palmdale. But the one in Palmdale, from my understanding, was a possible suicide. But the one over here, you know, where the gentleman got dropped off over here by the church was kind of interesting because the individual, he's a male Hispanic in his 50s that they got him right here is where he was picked up okay on Pillsbury the 200 block of Pillsbury you know and then the other ones happened right around the corner we'll take you over by there real quick too and the, the one with the pistol whipping we know it was two black suspects, both men, driving what was said to be a black Mercedes. And they pistol whipped a man and apparently fired or tried firing shots during the altercation with the suspects. And, I mean, this was all, this happened literally within, I'm going to say, 45 minutes. The ones in Lancaster. The, the one over here on 3rd Street that we're going to do a drive-by on, we're going to go drive through the area. There was actually three people that were shot. Out of those three people, one person did lose his life. My understanding, it's a young man, approximately 21 years old. Is this, is this third? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it happened right down this street, okay, right around this area. And then one of the individuals made it one street over. And it, at this location, it was two male blacks that were shot and one female black that was shot. They were all younger. One of the individuals actually made it around the corner over here and one of them was 
deceased on the scene. She passed our street, but there's, for within 45 minutes, four people being shot, you know, and the one was pistol whipped. That was actually a pretty violent night. Prayers go out to the family, to all the families. You know, and then right up here is where one of the individuals on this street, right in this area, I won't point out the exact house, but in this area on Stanridge, one of the individuals actually ran to this location and was picked up from here. Tomorrow, we should be able to have identified all the victims. We should have the names of the victims tomorrow. I know the name of one of them, but I'm not going to release it until we know for sure the next of kin and everybody has been notified but I do know actually one of the family members from the victim that was deceased at the location and this one over here which was on Pillsbury where he was picked up the actual pistol whipping did not occur at this location it occurred elsewhere I see somebody asking if there is anywhere safe. It doesn't matter where you're at at this point in time. It doesn't matter what state, what country you're in. You know, times are, tough. Times are real hard right now with the pandemic. It even made crime larger. And then you have people, you know, they want to take weapons from people. They want to take the guns. But the thing about that is, as we all know, if you take the bad guys, you take the good guys' guns, only the bad guys have them, then what? Nobody's safe. Yeah, it's, it's really tragic, you know. Times have changed. Um, Prosecution-wise, they're, you know, it's trying to be changed, which means for most people that get arrested for crimes, a lot of crimes that, you know, you went to jail for before is now basically cite and release, as we all are figuring out. But a handle needs to be gotten on the crime. People need to really, you know, protect themselves, watch out for themselves, watch your neighbors, you know, watch the kids around you, you know. Kids, people are, I mean, what was it a few days before that? There was a possible kidnapping slash high-speed chase through Palmdale into Little Rock. So, I mean, and times are changing, folks. Times are really changing. I mean, the gentleman that got pistol whipped, I know him very well. I know that man very well. And what happened to him is so wrong. 
you know, tomorrow, well, not tomorrow, probably Wednesday, I will do an interview with him. I will do a one-on-one -on -one interview. Unless I get home early enough tomorrow. It'll, if I get home early enough tomorrow, I'll do a one-on-one -on -one with him. But the things that are happening, the crime numbers are going up. And it's going up because a lot of people know that the punishment is down. No, not everything is a sight and release, but a lot of them are. Not only are a lot of them sight and release, but a $50,000 bail, you can get out with as little as, I think it's $1,000 now. You can get out with as little as 2% down. So, I mean, if you don't have strict laws, if you start taking away enhancements and all of that, you're going to get more crimes, more heavier crimes. I saw a sight and release of an assault with a deadly weapon. So, you know, not every crime is a sight and release, but I saw it in front of my own eyes. at what's happening around everybody. Yeah. Well, the ages of the victims go from the, I think, I think the youngest one may have been like 19 or 20 and then the oldest was, I think, in the 50s. And earlier, to, earlier tonight also, there was another um, a call that came out. I didn't respond to it because I was going somewhere else. But you got an elderly man that was jumped by three males out of a black, I think they said charger. And an elderly man was jumped by all three. You know... Everybody's becoming targets. Yeah, it, the governor, yeah. <laughs> through the governor and through the new district attorney, Gascon, everything is going to change. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse for a while. You know, until people see that they can't just go out and do the crimes and basically walk away unscathed. You know? Recently, luckily recently, a judge put on some restraining, I guess, restraining orders and temporary blocking Gascon from taking away stiffer penalties or ad charges. He said, no, you ha he has to follow the law. He can't just take the law and do what he wants. Because that's not the way laws work. You do have to follow laws, even if you are the district attorney. Drugs are getting heavier and heavier out here, that's for sure. The big issue out here right now with the drugs is overdoses. Overdoses are skyrocketing because people are home. Not only that, but people are stressing and people are also um, getting a lot of drugs, anywhere from Norcos to meth to coke to heroin that's cut with fentanyl. And fentanyl is not a very forgiving drug when it comes to overdosing.
Where is Paris? I don't know where Paris is. I can't answer that one. But basically with our governor and the new DA, it basically ties the hands of our law enforcement and it ties the hands of prosecutors is what they're trying to do, you know. Well, drugs are coming from China. Drugs are coming from all over the world. A lot of the fentanyl issues come in from Mexico. But just remember, folks, you you know, you got to be really careful. Keep an eye out for your neighbors. Keep an eye out for your neighbors and your friends' children because kidnapping and human trafficking is huge. Human trafficking is a very, very huge illegal industry. You know... Earlier tonight, there was somebody that, you know, a bunch of individuals were pounding on the door at Lang- at one of the rooms at Lancaster Inn, telling the person inside they were going to shoot them. So it's everywhere. And one thing that, you, you know, I, one thing that a lot of people do bring up, which I think is very true... What needs to be brought back is we need to bring back the mental hospitals. That truly does need to happen because we have a lot of people with a lot of different issues that are walking the streets that should not be walking the streets that are a danger, a major danger to society. And they basically closed down every mental institution that was out. Mental health is always overlooked. Another thing, believe it or not, that a lot of people, you know, that really needs help out here is help with people that young, young adults that are coming out of, um, foster care that are aging out especially ones with um, because a, a lot of children that go through foster care wind up with mental health issues due to abuse or drug abuse while they were in the womb and so forth and once those kids go through you know once they age out they age out and they're not getting as many services as they should be getting. Yeah, transitional housing is definitely needed for the youth. Transitional housing is needed not only for youth, but for adults, for homeless, You know, it's, there's so many different things that are going on right now in the U.S. that need to be taken care of. You know, I mean, with the fact of what's going on in this world right now, I'll give you, you know, I'm not going to talk about it a lot, but... With the fact of what's going on in with Cal City with the missing toddlers. That's a prime example that we need stricter guidelines. We need stricter guidelines with um, DCFS, CPS, whichever they want to call it. Um, we There's got to be something to go on. Because those... Those poor boys 
have been missing almost two months now. We're going on two months. And human trafficking is everywhere. I'm actually going to do a sit down pretty soon with some people about human trafficking. Just like we're going to do a sit down with some folks that actually lost their loved ones in regard, and do a PSA in regards to fentanyl use. turning into some certain streets that I don't want to show. But, you know, reform is definitely not only reform, but bring back old laws. Bring back old entities that we had available to people. Bring back all the you know, resources for addicts, bring back the resources for mental health, bring back all that stuff. Because we don't have it here anymore. <laughs> Hello, Natalie. I see you're selling apples with cereal flakes and so forth. How are you tonight? <laughs> but, I mean... There are so many different subjects. I don't know if these shootings were actually related to other shootings. All I know is that three shooting victims at the one between Stanridge and the other location all, they all came about one time, but we don't know if the shootings are all related to others, you know. Here, you want this one? Ooh, don't break our sodas. What's it on the front porch? Of the but, you know, the world we live in now is changing. And as a lot of people say, criminals actually have more rights nowadays than they did before. <laughs> oh, you're okay. <laughs> Natalie, you're good. We actually, we stand behind local businesses. You know, a lot of people think we've been making a lot of money, but just to let everybody know... Um, we've accepted donations since the pandemic started, but we have not charged actual charge for advertising. You know, it's... You know, it's truly sad when we actually have to sit back and think about it and talk about, you know, the fact that, hey, within an hour there was four shootings. And my honest opinion, my thought is the gentleman that was pistol whipped He would probably not be here if he didn't put up a fight. Yeah, Stanridge. It's off Stanridge. Um, that's off of Avenue J by Third Street East. You know, and then, I mean. It's crazy. It's 
not getting any better right now, and I don't think it's going to get any better for a while. With everything that's going on. You know, especially with so many people out of work. The numbers that I, today I saw for one of the first times that it said that the numbers for COVID-19 actually have been decreasing. You know, everybody, we, I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but everybody needs to get back to work. Everything needs to get back to normal as much as possible. And once that happens, some of the crime sprees will actually go down. Oh, where did that go? <sighs> Natalie Gutierrez, uh, in regards to the 17 and 18 year old that were killed in the hit and run, I do not have an update at this time. I wish I could say I did have an update, but we do not. And that's one of the things I was talking about in regards to bail. Okay. You got a man. He hits somebody. He does a hit and run. And then he runs from that hit and run. And... Kills two individuals in another hit and run. And takes off. They find alcohol containers at the scene. And the man gets out on a $50,000 bail. The normal bails on those are supposed to start at $50,000 a piece and go up to $250,000 a piece. And that's without the hit and run. That's the gross vehicular manslaughter charges. You know, he had two of those. I, I, don't, I don't think they were brothers. I think they were cousins, if I'm correct. So, you know, literally that man, I was told that he could have posted as little as $1,000 to get out of jail for killing two people in a hit and run fatality collision with alcohol involved. <laughs> and uh, that's part of the new bail also where I forget what the name of it is but if you can't afford bail you know it could be lowered your bail amount could be lower than normal say for an individual that's working okay they feel you can afford bail so, it, instead of you, okay, say you did the same crime, instead of you having a $50,000 bill, your bill could have been a half million because you had... But they can actually, up to a $50,000 bill, 
I don't know what that explosion was, but that was very loud. I'm, I'll be back on in a little bit, folks, because that was right outside my back door. I'll call you back very soon. I'll be back on soon. I'm going to check and see what's going on here. God bless you all. I'll talk to you all soon.